What's up YouTube and welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna model a cute keyboard. We're gonna start modeling some keycaps, learning a few modeling tools. The next step is gonna be the texturing. The last step is gonna be the lighting. We're gonna go for something quite moody and I will show you how to animate that. Let's get it. Let's start by adding a cube. Shift A, cube. The size of the cube is point 19 and the z-axis is 0.09 that's usually more or less the size of a keycap let's start by resizing the top face hitting tab 3 select the top face side view s control this looks pretty good two on the keyboard to be in edge mode select those two edges Let's shift them a little bit to have some slope. Now let's add some bevels. Add modifier, bevel. Let's add 12 segments and 0.01 is good. Apply the scale, control A, S. We're gonna use a new technique to apply the bevel on only some edges. Let's change the limit method to weight. Let's go back to edit mode with tab. Let's select all of those four edges using shift. In the item tab, increase mean bevel weight. 0.23 looks pretty good to me exit edit mode i want to shade smooth right click shade auto smooth i want to add one more bevel so we take care of the top and the bottom add a bevel modifier this time six segments 0.01 okay that's a little bit too much so maybe 0 0.001 0 0.02 okay i'm cool with that i want to have some curve at the top select the object tab this time we're gonna hit ctrl r to add some segments mouse will scroll up Let's see, six, six is good. Escape, so they stay in place. We're gonna select those two edges and we're gonna enable proportional editing. We're gonna go to the side view. Let's look at the top left because that's where the size of the proportional brush will be displayed. G, Z, and you can tell up there it's one meter, which is way too much. If I move my edges, everything will move with it. So we need to reduce that. Use mouse wheel scroll up until we have something that we're happy with. Okay, that looks pretty good. I want to check the topology, so I'm going to go to wireframe mode. The first bubble is actually not working really well with those new edges, so let's tweak that. Select edit mode, select those edges again, and let's reduce the bubble weight. 0.15 might be good. Okay, that looks a little bit better. I don't want to design a full keyboard, but if you feel like it, go ahead and have fun. I just want four keys, so I'm gonna use an array. Click on the object, add modifier, array modifier. I'm gonna add four as a count, and I'm gonna increase the factor just a little bit to have some space between the keys. I'm gonna add another arrays, but this time I want it on the Y. Same thing, 1.1 seems pretty good to me. And I want a really big space bar, so I'm gonna duplicate that cube escape and remove all the array g y and i'm gonna hit control to make sure everything snapped to the grid make sure to uh, disable proportional editing top view start moving and hit control to make sure it's aligned with the grid let's move that into a collection called keys that's okay for now let's create the board so let's use a cube shift a cube To increase the cuteness of the keyboard, I want some really big bevels. I'm gonna hit tab 2 and I'm gonna select those edges. Control B. I'm gonna increase the number of segments. 32. Right click, shade auto smooth. Tab again and now I'm gonna use the face mode. I'm gonna type I for inset. That's gonna be the thickness of my keyboard, so maybe something like that. With my face selected, I'm gonna hit E and go down with my mouse. I'm gonna add a bevel modifier. I'm gonna hit Ctrl A S. I'm gonna decrease the size of the bevel, something like 0.001. I'm gonna resize my board a little bit. I'm gonna use the wireframe and X-ray mode so I can select all of the points and I'm gonna move them a little bit. Looks like the board is a little bit too thin, but that's an easy fix, edit. 3, G, Z, boom. Keyboards usually have some slope, so let's do that now. 
hide the keys. Make sure you have a wireframe as well, like X-ray enabled. Select all of those points. And we're gonna use our good friend, the proportional editing again. G, increase the size of your brush. Hit Z, go up, select all of those points. S, Z, zero. Put back your keys on, select all of them. R, control. Not really happy with that intersection here. Let's go to the top view, S, and slightly increase the size. Let's add some lights to preview our scene. Viewport shading, open the shader editor, world, shift A, S, environment texture, control T, plug that to the background, and go get your favorite HDRI. For today, I'm going to use a plugin that I love called Easy HDRI, which is basically the same as doing that, but you have more control. I click on the preview and I select the one I want, maybe this one, and then I just hit create world. The really cool thing with that is I have control about the background display straight up, so I can just hit solid. I don't need my floor as well as my axis. It starts highlighting the shadows, so I know those keys are not really sitting on the board. So I'm gonna click on this cube, tab, three, select this face and go up. Let's work on the first board material. Click on this cube, open a shader editor, new. I'm gonna add a camera and I'm gonna set it up the way I want. I'm gonna clean up my working area. The board is gonna be metallic. It's gonna be almost black and it's gonna be a little bit bumpy. So we're gonna add a bump node. Plugging to the normal and we're gonna use a noise. We're gonna plug that to the object and we're gonna increase the scale, like a lot. I'm gonna reduce the distance a little bit, as well as the strength. I really just want a tiny bit of it. The roughness is pretty constant, which is not really photorealistic. So I'm gonna duplicate that noise and I'm gonna add that to the roughness. I'm gonna introduce a color ramp but this time the scale is too small, so I'm going to scale that to 1. Preview with Control shift right click Maybe this is a little bit too big. Let's reduce the range between the two colors so it's a little bit more subtle. Select the black and turn that into something more grayish. Take the white, same. Everything looks pretty black, so I just want to add really quickly a light at the bottom. Make sure I do have a rim light. Shift A, light area, RX 180, GZ, control S4, and we're gonna increase the power to something like that. So let's start with the plastic material. Select a key. The color is gonna be more toward the blacks. Already looking pretty sweet. But if I zoom in, everything looks really flat. So let's add some noise. And a bump factor to the height and normal to the normal. <clears throat> the noise is pretty big. Let's scale that down. 900. Let's play with the strength. 0.1. Something subtle like that is pretty good. Now let's start the creation of the texture, which is basically some letters. For this tutorial, I used Photoshop, but you can use pretty much any other image editing software. I created even squares and I added the letter and centered within that square. I can disable everything except the text. And the really cool thing is that actually Blender can read PSDs. So that's pretty handy. This allows me to change letters on the fly if I want to. We're going to try to minimize the use of different materials. For that, we're going to use UVs. I'm going to slide a window and I'm gonna go to UV editor. I'm gonna apply the erase. So what I can do is just save this cube in case I need it at some point later on. And maybe I can move it to a new collection called backup array and apply the array. Well, actually let's apply everything. 
I have one mesh for everything. I'm gonna add a image texture in my shader editor. Image texture, control T, and I'm gonna open up my PSD. Your UV here might look different. It's just that I uh, unwrapped off camera. So I'm gonna select all of the faces of my keys, starting from here. Shift A, left click, I'm gonna hit U. I'm gonna move my mouse to the UV editor, type A. So there's no text on my UVs. See, so if I move it, you can see text is appearing. Even if I move out of the text, the thing is appearing. Now let's work on the top of the key, select all of the faces, and now I'm gonna move everything in place. Scale with S, G to move. That's actually the not the good image. So let's use the right one. And I'm gonna try to align with this point and with the first line. So we have our first key map. I'm gonna speed up the video because I'm gonna do the exact same thing for all of the keys. One way to make sure your UV projection are actually the same size, what you can do is select all of the top faces, U, Q projection, and here in the UV editor type S.2, which will scale down the whole thing. This way, you know, your texture will have the same size everywhere. Here I have some issue with my space bar. So I'm gonna go back to Photoshop and actually move that down. Image, reload. The first two rows are done. This is definitely not my favorite part of the process, but at least I wanted to show you how to do it. And I'm gonna add a new texture for my space bar. New material. I don't wanna redo all the work from scratch. So I'm gonna literally copy all of those nodes and paste those nodes in there. Now fixing the UVs. Everything is matte black, love that, but I want that space bar to have an accent color. To do that, I'm gonna introduce a mix color. The node is called mix, but I'm gonna go in color mode. The second color is gonna be something like that for now. I'm gonna set that to add, and I'm gonna turn my factor to one. The really fun part is you can also use that texture to drive, let's say, the emission. I'm gonna switch to Eve so I can have some bloom. And you can see those keys are actually lit. And I can do the same for the other ones. Use this in here. And now everything looks pretty glowy. The last part is pretty much the lighting. I'm using a HDRI with a area light at the bottom. So I can set the strength to zero. And what I like to do is what people usually refers to painting with light, which basically mean placing the light the way you want to highlight the feature of the product you want to highlight. I'm gonna split my screen so I can have my camera view here. The process is very simple. We covered that in a previous tutorial. So it's basically duplicating the area light and placing them most likely using a three-point light system. So I'm gonna speed up the video a little bit. Since everything is pretty detailed, I can go like super close up or I can also animate it. For this tutorial, we're gonna stay pretty simple. I'm gonna move everything into a new collection called keyboard. I'm gonna create a empty, so shift A, empty, plane axis, and I'm gonna link my keyboard to that empty. Control on all of the parts and I'm gonna select the empty last. In this window, I'm gonna hit Control P and I'm gonna select Object, Keep Transform. All of my objects are linked to that empty. So if I want to rotate this empty, everything will be linked. We've never done that before, so we're gonna learn how to set keyframes and how to change the interpolation mode. So my timeline is here. I'm gonna select my empty and on the rotation, I'm gonna hit I on my keyboard. Everything turns yellow and now I have a dot here, which is a keyframe. I'm gonna go to frame 150 and I'm gonna add 360 to my X. Once I tap 360, I'm gonna tap I again and it's gonna become yellow again and I have a new keyframe. 
I'm gonna set my end frame to 150. And if I play back the animation, usually if you want to have an animation that looks like it loops, a good rule of thumb is to select those two points, right click and use interpolation mode linear. This means there's not going to be any easing curves, which means the animation will be constant. If I hit play back again, so this completes the tutorial. I'm going to render the animation and we'll see each other for clothing thoughts. Thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It's always appreciated. And share something that you like about this video in the comments or something you would like to see in the future. See ya.